Sharp Short Stories. Dan's New School. Dan's first term at his new school hadn't been the most successful. He and his parents were forced to move to London because his dad was forced to find a new job and Dan's new school in the city was bigger, louder and rougher than his old school in a peaceful village in the northwest of England. He used to walk past fields to get to school and now he squeezed onto an overcrowded bus. He used to walk down peaceful corridors to get to class. Now he was shoulder barged for being the new kid and called a northern monkey. He used to go to his friends' houses after school. Now he stayed in on his own. One day in class, he heard a couple of boys talking on the table behind him. They were talking excitedly about the house party a girl in their year was having at the weekend. One of them wasn't sure where it was, so the other explained it in great detail. Dan took note. These boys certainly weren't as ignored and unpopular as Dan, but they certainly weren't in the top groups that strutted around the school like they owned the place, like that tall boy. That tall boy Dan hated because he always barged into him or threw chips at him or called him words he didn't quite know the meaning of, but were most certainly insults. That tall boy who called himself Triss. Triss. What a stupid name. Even more stupid was the fact that every time Dan needed to sit in the toilet cubicle to get some quiet time or have a little cry, he saw this stupid name scrawled across the cubicle doors in stupid graffiti writing. Why didn't the teachers exclude him? This Triss could not walk down a corridor without swearing or pushing someone. He could not go into a canteen without throwing food at someone. He could not even go into a toilet cubicle without vandalising it. And Dan hated him, and he hated the teachers for letting him get away with it. Dan had been at that school for five weeks and had hardly spoken to anyone. He still had another two years there, so he decided he'd have to do something drastic to try and fit in and meet some friends. The day of that house party came. He remembered the address because the boys in class had repeated it about ten times. He knew his plan was sad. Embarrassing even, but what choice did he have? Do nothing and speak only to his parents for the next two years. So he came up with a plan. Walk up and down the street the house party was on until he coincidentally bumped into the two boys in his class and try and walk in with them. After 45 minutes of pretending to be on his way to some destination, and hiding behind cars to avoid being seen by the people from his school heading to the party, Dan finally saw the not very popular but more popular than he boys laughing and approaching the house in which the party was taking place. He stealthily snuck up behind them and joined in with their laughter. It took them a few moments to even notice he was there. What are you doing here? The boy called Aaron said. Going the party, said Dan. With who? said the boy called Ryan. I'm uh, meeting some girl there, said Dan, lying through his teeth. What girl? said Aaron suspiciously. Dan racked his brain for a name. Lisa, he finally said. Hmm, said Aaron. They didn't seem to believe him, but he didn't tell him to go away, and he stuck with the two boys as they were allowed into the house party. There was blaring music, smoke in the air, and sweaty teenagers packed in the corridor shouting into each other's ears. Dan and his new friends squeezed through the crowds and into the living room. They found a bit of space in the corner of the room next to a large speaker and stood there trying to look as though they were enjoying themselves. After ten minutes, Dan really couldn't see the point of this house party but he was glad that at least he wasn't sitting at home watching I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here with his mum and dad. Even though they weren't talking to him, it felt good just to be near people his own age who weren't telling him to go away or calling him a northern monkey. Unfortunately for Dan, just as he was starting to feel a bit more comfortable in his new surroundings, a new group of boys arrived at the party. A new group of boys with a very tall leader. A very tall leader called Triss.
After a few minutes of enjoying the attention of the boys coming up to him and wanting to shake his hand, and the girls coming up to him giving him a kiss on the cheek, Triss spotted Dan in the corner of the room. They made eye contact, and Dan quickly pretended to look for something in the hope that Triss would leave him alone. Dan picked up a box from the shelf he was standing next to. He pretended to look closely at the box to avoid eye contact with Triss. It then dawned on him what the box he was holding contained. Buckaroo. Oi, Northern Monkey, what are you doing here, you little mug? said Triss as he approached Dan. Aaron and Ryan looked at the floor and moved slowly away from Dan. What you got here then? said Triss as he looked at the buckaroo box in Dan's hands. Buckaroo! <laughs> How you down north, is it? Play buckaroo. Oh, you lot, look. The northern monkey wants to play buckaroo. Everyone in the room pointed and laughed at Dan. Soon people came in from the hall and the kitchen to see what was so funny. Then more people pointed and laughed at Dan. Come on in, let's have a game, said Triss, as he snatched the box out of Dan's hands. Everyone stopped laughing and pointed their phones at them, hoping for a fight. Triss slowly took the lid off the box, held it out to the side and dropped it. He then picked up one of the contents of the box, a small plastic guitar. He then threw it in Dan's face. He then picked up another of the contents of the box, a small plastic spade. He then threw that in Dan's face. Then another, then another, until he tipped everything out on top of Dan's head. The plastic horse hurt the most. Good game, mate, said Triss, as he pushed Dan out of the way to get to the speaker. Ryan looked at Dan guiltily, and Aaron said, Sorry, mate, and shrugged his shoulders, as if to say, What could we do? At least they stood next to Dan, which was more than anyone else would do. Triss picked up an iPhone, which was on the shelf next to the speaker, and started pressing the screen. The music stopped and everyone complained. He looked round the room as if to say, Anyone got a problem? And no one was brave enough to say anything. He then got his own phone out and started touching the screen. He'd stopped the dance music and put his own music on, which had a lot of very naughty words. He'd obviously disconnected the first phone's connection to the speaker and connected his own. He then put his phone on top of the shelf next to the speaker and rejoined his mates in the centre of the room. Dan took note. After about 10 minutes, when the party was back to normal and everyone back to ignoring him instead of laughing at him, Dan walked over to Triss's phone, which was still connected to the speaker, still blasting out music with naughty words. Dan had a flash of inspiration. A flash of genius. He picked up Triss's phone, which thankfully wasn't locked. He went into Triss's contacts. He found Mum. He rang it. The music stopped and everyone, including Triss, turned to look at Dan standing by the speaker. Then the whole house heard. Tristan, is that you, sweetie? It's Mummy here. Did you mean to call me? Is everything okay? The whole house went silent. Everyone stood with wide eyes and open mouths in shock. Tristan, are you there, sweetie? Are you still at chess club? I can pick you up if you're ready to go. People flooded into the living room from the hall and the kitchen. They pointed at Triss, a.k.a. Tristan, and exploded into laughter. Tristan, where are you? I can hear people laughing. Are you okay, Buttercup? Buttercup sent everyone over the edge. They were laughing so much it hurt. Triss, a.k.a. Tristan, was white as a sheet. His whole reputation as a hard man was over. His accent, his clothes, the way he bullied people, was all exposed as an act with one phone call to his mum. Dan had killed his whole reputation in a matter of seconds. Triss, 
aka Tristan, walked over to Dan like a broken man. Dan handed him his phone. Tris, aka Tristan, took the phone and whispered in Dan's ear, I won't forget this. I'll never forget this. He walked out of the room and left the house followed by some, but not all, of the group he'd come in with. Aaron and Ryan went over and put their hands on Dan's shoulders, eyes wet with tears of laughter, and congratulated Dan on his stroke of genius. The rest of the party did the same, and Aaron and Ryan never left his side, happy, for now at least, to be seen as the friends of the new boy who had exposed Triss as Tristan. To be continued. Glossary. Strut. Walk in a confident or arrogant way. Scrawl. Write something messily. Drastic. Extreme. Blaring. Loud. AKA. An abbreviation meaning as known as. Comprehension questions. 1. How is Dan's new school different to his old school? List four things. 2. What did Dan hear the boys talking about in class? 3. What was Dan's plan to get into the party? 4. How did Dan embarrass Triss? 5. What do you think Triss meant when he said, I won't forget this? Language and structure. 1. At the start of the story, what contrasts are made between Dan's old life and his new one? How does the reader feel for Dan? 2. The sentence Dan took note is repeated throughout the story. Why has the writer chosen to repeat this sentence? 3. The writer puts an ellipsis at the end of some paragraphs. What effect does this create? 4. Look at this sentence from the story. Dan and his new friends squeeze through the crowds and into the living room. Why has the writer put quotation marks around the word friends? If you like Dan's new school, read Diary of an Unteenager by Pete Johnston.